After years of research and development, SpaceX has announced it may finally be heading towards its final designs for the Starship with its latest prototype. Considered the crown jewel of Elon Musk's plan to colonize Mars, the Starship is tasked with making humanity a multi-planetary species. Let's take a closer look at this newest prototype. SpaceX is actively trying to turn the sci-fi dream of a Martian colony into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan a large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on those worlds using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. Back then, Musk stated that the ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked. The rocket will contribute most of that height, measuring 254 feet tall to the ship's 162 feet. There will be some overlap between the two vehicles during stacking, which explains why the total height isn't 416 feet. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff, 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate. And there won't just be one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people-packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months, helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years. Musk did not lay out plans for building this city. That will happen organically, as more and more people arrive on Mars, he said. Comparing the ITS to the Transcontinental Railroad that helped open the American West to settlement from the East and Midwest in the 19th century. And these pioneers won't just be the super-rich if all goes according to plan. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. This overall vision has held firm over the past three years, but Musk has repeatedly tweaked the design and the system's name. In 2017, for example, he announced that the ITS was now the BFR, which stood for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor, measuring 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked, and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and six on the spaceship. But the biggest change concerned the use of the spaceship rocket duo. Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its spaceflight needs, from launching satellites to ferrying people to and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, therefore, will be phased out over the long haul, as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture. The BFR design then experienced a growth spurt that nearly took the system back to its original height. In September 2018, Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now stand 387 feet tall when stacked. The BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six, and the vehicle will now sport four movable fins, two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail. These fins will help the ship maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres, such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads, as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin. Two months later, the BFR was no more. Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship. That will also be the spaceship's name, whereas the huge rocket will be called Super Heavy. At that point, SpaceX still planned to build the Starship vehicle out of carbon fiber. 
but in January 2019, Musk announced that he was switching to stainless steel. Steel is a bit heavier than carbon fiber, but has great thermal properties and is far, far cheaper. He has since called the material switch the best design decision yet made on the ITS-BFR-Starship project. In May 2019, Musk said the current plan calls for six Raptors on the Starship vehicle rather than seven. And a few months later, he tweeted that Super Heavy will now sport 35 Raptors instead of 31. That brings us to the latest design update, which Musk presented on September 28, 2019 from SpaceX's South Texas facility near the tiny village of Boca Chica. The billionaire didn't announce any huge changes, though there was some more engine news. Super Heavy will now have space for 37 Raptors, though not all of those slots will be filled on every flight. Each mission will probably require at least 24 Raptors on the booster. Musk had previously estimated the total development cost of the Starship project to be between $2 billion and $10 billion. He later stated that the price tag for SpaceX will be toward the lower end of that range. After the initial launch, the rocket is responsible for delivering the Starship crew capsule to orbit around the Earth. After it has done so, the booster will detach and steer itself towards a soft landing back at the launch pad. While this feat seemed almost impossible at first, SpaceX rockets have been doing it successfully for several years now. The next stage would involve the booster picking up a fuel tanker and carrying it into orbit as well. This fuel tanker will then be used to replenish the Starship for its voyage towards Mars. Once en route, the craft will deploy solar panels to harvest energy from the sun in an attempt to save precious onboard fuel for what will be an exciting and groundbreaking landing on the Red Planet. According to Musk's vision, these crafts and their crew will remain in Earth's orbit until a planetary alignment brings the Earth and Mars closer together. This is a window that opens once every 26 months. The long-term plan for SpaceX is to have many hundreds of spaceships waiting in orbit to depart en masse as part of the Mars Colonial Fleet. Perhaps the most important part for this entire plan to work is the reusability of the boosters. Musk's plan revolves around making sure that each spaceship is capable of being reused as much as possible. He states that there is no way to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars without reusability. It's a fundamental part of the plan. He also adds that if the wooden sailing ships from the old days were not reusable, the United States probably wouldn't have existed. SpaceX estimates it will be able to use each of its rocket boosters a whopping thousand times, each tanker a hundred times, and each spaceship twelve times at least. The first missions are only estimated to carry around 100 people on each ship, but gradually that number is expected to increase to more than 200. According to these estimates, putting a million people on the surface of Mars could take anywhere from 40 to 100 years after the maiden voyage. The reusability of the rockets also means that once there, the crafts can then be used to return to Earth whenever needed. After a few uncrewed cargo supply missions have already landed on Mars, the human phase of colonization will finally be ready to begin. One of the biggest hurdles that stand in the way is the Red Planet's notoriously thin atmosphere. NASA had to be extra careful when landing their Curiosity rover on the planet, which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds and is a tiny fraction of the total payload that the manned missions will carry. This is one of the reasons why SpaceX continues to perfect its supersonic retro rocket technology, so they can gradually enter the Martian atmosphere and lower a very heavy spacecraft onto the surface using this reusable method. That's not all, though. Entering the atmosphere is another problem that needs attention. The craft needs to withstand a heated entry to the planet and perform a propulsive landing while still being capable of refueling and going back to Earth to start over again. The first few journeys would probably just drop off supplies and set up a propellant depot on the planet so return trips are possible when needed. After the supply runs are complete, humans can finally make their way to Mars. The first crew will need to rely on digging beneath the surface and dredging up buried ice. This will be used as a water source, which will eventually power the entire colony. When the essential crews consisting of scientists and engineers have finally set up, competition will start over the first few seats that can take willing individuals to the newly colonized planet. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. 
The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continues on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype Booster 7 on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward, but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's discovery of a terrifying planet-killer asteroid. Do you think it's important for humans to become a multiplanetary species? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.